Good evening, I'm Tiro, and this is Less of a Mistake. So, if you actually checked up on my stuff, this is a replacement video, and basically, if you actually heard what I said in the last video, you can, can skip this one, because this is just going to be a repetition. So this is a clip for Guild Wars 2, and basically it's for the past six months I've had this really huge urge to write some guides for Guild Wars 2. It's kind of my nature and hobby. I like to explain things, but I also like to fill in holes and gaps. I like to explore the unknown things. And for Guild Wars 2, like many games, there's lots of information for beginners. There's beginner tips. And there's lots of guides for long-term goals. There's nothing in the middle. There's nothing to breach that gap. And basically you can do that for any video game. Go to game packs, go to a forum, go to whatever. They'll say, here, read the the beginner's guide. And if they don't deal, give you the beginner's guide, they usually have these very long paragraphs responding on why you are wrong. That's not to say that they are being incorrect or rude, it's just that they're, you know, they like the game a lot, they hang out at whatever community is it, and of course they know all their stuff. So there's nothing for that in-betweenness, or at least it's very difficult to communicate that on the internet. So yeah, I want to do a tutorial series by that. However, it's been 10 years since I've done a YouTube video, and I certainly can't do it my old-fashioned style. Uh, which was basically a sing do a single take, kind of live recording. Do that at least two times, maybe three, watch them all, pick the best, and publish. Now there are tools a lot more available for video editing and whatnot, and even for gaming and such, so I just cannot do that anymore. Just It's just inappropriate and unacceptable. It really shows my age. Especially considering that there are more teenagers and young adults publishing better work than I am or could. Um, it's just a semblance of youth. It's just more of like I've hit the point where I don't want to invest time in certain new skills. Um, yeah, I'm kind of micromanaging video editing is kind of one of them. However, also in kind of the the YouTube. Or Lisa, my LP hobby is that I do like trying new stuff. So maybe simple video editing might be new, but real, you know, in my LP projects, everything was always I always did something new. Adam's family was just how to do an LP, so I can have practice of you know doing the Final Fantasy Legend series. I did a quickie with. Animal Crossing because that was the first thing with uh, video capture but that was just also actually no I think Cubivore was first and that was just a practice video capture and then that was to do Animal Crossing the Golden Axe kind of impromptu kind of little adventure basically but I don't necessarily want to learn video editing my real motivating force is I have this huge urge, there's like this just gaping hole, like I need to write a guide, and, or at least I need to make a guide, and I can't just write it because nobody's going to read block text, but it can be illustrated a lot better with video, but since I'm going to be switching off between in-game examples and kind of maybe diagrams for to il better illustrate the concepts, it has I have to do video editing. So that's what these couple of days have been. of. Um, of just forcing myself to get back into the habit. Would it be baby steps? It wouldn't be baby steps of just doing it. So, a couple of days ago, it's the video is no longer there. I've deleted it. I basically just did a record, did an encode, did a double check audio editing and blah blah blah. Publish it just so I can get it out of my system. I believe in my in one of the comments, which I didn't say in the video. It. Um, it's not my art teacher, but my sister's art teacher in high school. Basically, they take the drawing class, and what the students would do is they would look at the paper, 
for literally 10, 15, 20 minutes and not do anything. And what to teach her for practice, what she did was she basically took a pencil and did a hard scribble on everyone's canvas or I think sketch pad. And then she said, erase it. And then though, no. once she did that, everybody just starts drawing or doing their sketches immediately. You know, no problem because now they don't have the analysis paralysis of opportunity. What can I do? So these garbage videos are intentional, you know, just like get it out of my system, get more familiar with the software and actually doing very crummy bad editing just so then now I can do the publish thing. Like for this tech, for this video, I actually recorded and I'm doing my voiceover commentary separately and so I'm not doing a single take mix. I'm actually I think this is like I have two pauses actually in the explanations of this video. So now I'm going to move on to the actual project or just blather. Just again, this is more practice. I need to get practice into talking, having proper enunciation on a microphone because I know it's very easy to go quiet and kind of mumble to yourself, blah, blah, blah. It's over time, but enunciation. So what I want to do is, is have a Guild Wars 2 primer. <clears throat> As mentioned before, there's lots of tips for noobs and beginners. Um, and there's basically that's it for tutorials. There's not really other tutorials. The only closest thing is for tutorials is uh, benchmarks. It's like here's a build, here's me doing the damage, the actual damage and the rotations of skills for five minutes, demonstrating like this is the max amount of damage or DPS I can get for you know five minutes. You know, this is the build, kind of, so it's a very high-end um, game understanding, like, this is not, this is speaking to the dedicated players, the raiders, the speedrunners, kind of, here I have pushed the character to the utmost limits. Or, let's say, I'm pushing the character and therefore it's proof and blah blah blah, there's argument in the community about what would be what's the bare minimum standard and so on and so forth but like you know beginner tips hardcore um, world record speed runs optimizations blah 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 I want to do all the mechanical stuff in the similar way our uh, Guild Wars 2 is a lot like Dark Souls or Monster Hunter they're both action games. They're very fun. They have very fun action combat, and they have a lot of mechanics. But there's no way to learn the mechanics. It's you know there's bare minimum how to play the game stuff. Like here's how to you know here's actually how you do the skills and the attacks. Here's your storage. You know here's the mechanic of let's say your weapon's going bad or you need to accumulate souls. But all the stats. All the weapon choices and selections, the fact that monsters have different hitboxes that take different damage, or at least there's different damage types and the different locations you hit the monsters have different damages, like that's nowhere explained. That has all been discovered by the community and recorded to an, a, a wiki, which is basically an encyclopedia. So basically the, the reason kind of like why Monster Hunter is such a difficult game is not so much the difficulty it's that huge gap of playing the game and understanding the mechanics because all you can really do is actually read the wiki and how easy is learning that way is like is literally like learning it's like learning how to drive by reading an encyclopedia of cars and vehicles and eventually after learning all the parts of these vehicles like Here's the crane shrive, and here's the you know the gas, and here's the pedals, and here's the things like you learn how to drive the car. And like, no, it's like you put it all together in a gestalt synthesizing way. So my the ideas for my video tutorial is it's going to be it's going to actually demonstrate the mechanics, and it's going to be very kind of cut and dry, almost redundant. 
uh, if, but you know, the idea is that once you understand these things in the abstract, when you play the game, it all clicks. My example is basically medical comedies. So older people will have MASH, and younger people will have Scrubs. I'm ignoring all teenagers and young and twenty somethings, early twenty somethings, because they're not my demographic. Whatever. You can watch Scrubs and Mash and enjoy the shows and have a laugh from the comedy because they're funny things. I intend to actually do a tutorial like here's the here's the basics of here are basic <coughs> medical definitions, and here's basic medical hospital procedures. So you would watch my videos, know the words, know the the rules. You go watch the shows. There's just so much flavor and spice to it. Of like, you get all these additional hidden jokes. If you want to just kind of experience this in a different way, it's like, go watch your favorite movie you or your favorite movie as a kid, the movie that was your favorite when you were five, six years old. Before you went to school, go and watch it, and it's going to be completely different because now, as a functioning person, you can see, oh, this was really good, this is really entertaining, or this is garbage, or you may even get some plot points that weren't there. You know, it's um, I can't. I will do an example. Okay, Wizard of Oz, because that's actually... I do have evidence of a teacher saying that everybody has seen the movie Wizard of Oz. Actually, in the internet era, that may not be true anymore. But anyways, Wizard of Oz also is sort of like an allegory for the populist movement around the 19th century... or the early late 19th century, early 20th century. And so Dorothy is the common people. Scarecrow are the farmers. Tin Man are the industrial workers, people who work in the factories, kind of, you know, cogs in the machine. They really have no, they they work the factories on an assembly line and because it's so boring they've had their soul sucked out, hence no heart. Line are the politicians, they have the power but they really don't know how to move. And the fact in the book Dorothy has silver slippers, not ruby slippers. It was ruby for MGM because MGM want to it was the first full color movie and so red pops out more than silver um, for being a McGough and so that's just a theat that's just a, a directional idea so anyways I told you that you can go watch Wizard of Oz and you're like oh this makes so much more sense it may or may not have been intentional for Frank Baum also another thing is Wizard of Oz is by Frank Baum he intended it to be the fairy tales for the United States. So if you actually know the fairy tale genre, which is modern era, fairy tales are not medieval because in fairy tales you have guns. There's always the huntsman or the hunter. And if you have a gun, you can't have a knight because you can just shoot him. Also, there's something another thing that's very that's like quintessentially modern in fairy tales and you don't realize it until it's point out. Oh, a miller. There's always the miller's son. Windmills, water wheels, a mill, that's modern era. They did not have that in the Middle Ages. If you wanted to grind flour, you did it by hand. But to actually have a water wheel or a windmill to grind, the f to have a stone to grind it for you automatically, that's modern era. For, you know, it's the modern era, early modern. It's kind of weird. We'll... It's, yeah, more trivial. But anyway, that's what I intend to do with these guys, kind of. Very dry, very specific kind of definition things. Maybe in a couple case study examples. Um, and that's just out of the urge because I like explaining things and writing guys, and it's out there. Just it's almost a compulsion, anyways. So that's about it, and I have another four minutes of this, eight minutes. So. I don't know, I think I'll just end this off here. So, uh, until next time, I'm Tiro, and I can't say have fun gaming, because that's another shocker idea. Like, I can't, it's not going to be an LP, it's going to be a tutorial. Um, 
like she and whatever so see ya and have fun playing games